hey, what I've got on the table that I'm going to be working on right now is a Fender Squire Telecaster Custom 2. Uh, this is not the typical Telecaster uh, vintage modified or anything like that that we're uh, I, that I'm used to seeing. This is um, it's got two P90s in it factory and this is what we're going to be working on. I'll turn this over, turn the camera over here in a second and show you a couple interesting things about this guitar. So first of all, um, crazy knobs, right? What the heck, I just figured, well, let's try a couple different ones on there. They usually have these top hats here that uh, I like. They're cool, but I figure if I'm going to rat rod this thing out a little bit, why not uh, try a few things out? So I got these on the web, and we'll see what they so they work very well. Um, anyways, what we're going to be looking at today, though, is uh, what was in this hole here. And that was a little toggle. What I found was, as I was playing, I kept hitting that toggle. Um, maybe I'm flailing my arms too wildly, but point being, if I was uh, playing a bridge position, I would immediately, as soon as I start playing, switch over to the neck position, and that started to really bug me. So, what I ended up doing was move the neck out of here. The neck's kind of cool. Check out the neck. Just did a little front job on that. Um, what I ended up doing was, whoa, that's ugly into there. <laughs> um, truth be told, when I pulled this thing apart the first time. I I was baffled. I had never seen anything like that. And what I deduced, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm thinking that they had a lot of back stock of the like the 72s or something like that that had um, uh, the you could see where the actual humbucker routing actually was going from here to here. And I bet they just figured we got to move some of this inventory. What can we do? So they contracted with Seymour Duncan, got some P90s in there, and then had some uh, had some routing fun. And I mean, these things are just, they're pretty butchered. It's, uh, that's about as hack job. I think if I gave it to my mom, she'd probably do a better job, but whatever, it works. It's kind of jalopied in there a little bit. And the backside is uh, kind of funny too. Um, I think we had some, <laughs> Just some brackets laying around like hey let's tie these things to the pick guard here anyhow um, what I'm gonna do is uh, put a new switch in here um, now what I've chosen is a double switch like this this is a, this is a rocker switch this is an on off rocker and um, I'm going to put them in so that they're facing, I guess, like this, probably. And I'll be able to select either both pickups on, or one on, or both off. Um, the cool thing is, this is also a kill switch, built-in dual kill switch, which is kind of, kind of cool. I've always wanted to put a kill switch on one of my Telecasters, so... I guess this is going to be the maiden flight of that. Um, anyhow, what we're going to have to do, because obviously that's a square, that's a circle. Not going to work. So um, I've, I've marked off, I don't know if you can see that, I marked off a little square. Um, and I've used a handy business card um, to cut out uh, from, a, from a measurement that I've done. Um, a template so that I can mark that square off. So what I did, I just marked it off in red so I could see it. Um, we're going to be cutting over that, and that provides an overlap. So there's a lip that goes around this, and it's a very small lip. So you have to be really careful not to butcher this, or else you're going to have to buy yourself a new pick guard. And these ones are really hard to find. I've only found one place that sells them. And um, so as far as the wiring goes, what we're doing is we're taking, let me move some of this here. Um, 
we're take we I took off all the leads here, and um, we're gonna take this gray. Uh, we've got a gray wire, and a red wire, and a white wire. Oh, there they are. Sorry, a gray wire. There, a red wire, and a green wire. Now they all look white right here, which is kind of confusing. Nevertheless. What we've done is we've looped this back one. This is going to be the off position. So I only have to make one connection here. So that way, no matter which lever I uh, switch, um, as long as it's in these bottom positions, it'll be off. And then I'll put the two, uh, the two pickup ons here, here and here. So I guess I better get cutting. So I did uh, a couple tests and tried to determine what was the right Dremel head to use and I did it on an old pick guard here and you can see where here I cut one out and it was just a wee bit messed up. So I switched a different tool and then I got one that was more sufficient here, right there. And I'm just using, I started out using the actual this head here. I started out using this head, and this is like to cut plastic. So I thought, well, I'm cutting plastic. That makes sense. Um, and it was just, it was too big, much too thick, melted the uh, plastic, and the actual head was just too big for that that uh, hole. So I just got a little sander disc here. Um, I didn't think it was actually going to cut, but it cuts right through it really well, actually. Um, so I'm going to put. I'm gonna take that and um, like I said I've already tested out on here this is gold spray paint that whatever didn't work <laughs> I'd really love to find a gold one of these but I can't and they're fortunate to have made so I guess I don't get a gold one anyways I'm gonna start cutting um, and then I'm gonna install <laughs> okay so I've taken out the piece you see on the back there was some shielding so when you cut it through you got to make sure you get all the way through and um, you can see where it left some some snaggly burrs on there so you just kind of have to go in there and smooth it out a bit um, I've hit the back side already and tried to make sure that anything that might be catching uh, will now I'm going to take this guy and there's a close-up of him. And these, these things are crazy cheap um, on the internet. And uh, I'll put, plop them in. Okay, got it in. Uh, I'd use two hands for that, so I just figured I'd put it down and put it in. <laughs> um, anyways, kinda cool. Um, I'm gonna get it all wired up Ch -ch -ch -ching. got a ground going back and I gotta attach to one of the pickups on the back and when I get that all in place I'll string it up and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished and cleaned up because now this thing is mighty dirty and stuff still deciding on these knobs here hmm curious all right, so now I've got all these things taken care of down here. I uh, got those soldered. These two points, each to the east of the pickups, and then this to the off switch. This used to be the wire two that would connect both of them together. So now these two are doing that by themselves. Follow the ground back and just got that tapped onto this guy here. And tied him up with a couple of zip ties. I probably should have had smaller ones, but hey, do what you can. 
All right, I'm gonna put this all back together here and then check it out. So here's some else trick that I did um, right before I lock everything down. Um, I noticed that on the previous pit guard, the weight of these P90s was um, creating a, 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 a concave area in, in here, just pulling the, pulling the plastic down and warping it. So um, what I did to help relieve that was I just cut a half of a sponge um, just to give it a little bit of extra cushion in there. So I'm gonna put one in there and then I got, I'm gonna be putting one in the back cavity. And um, I made sure to let them dry out fully before I put it in there. Uh, hopefully it'll be fine. Shouldn't cause any damage that I can think of. And it's not the kind that crumbles. So we'll see. Okay, I have the actual body put back together. I'm not gonna attach the ant, the, uh, the neck right now. I'm just gonna test this out. I mean, show you how it works. Um, so I've got this plugged into a small practice amp. Still wondering about these knobs down here. What do you think? Uh, right now I have both in down position. You can see that. And I did that because if I happen to actually hit them when I'm strumming up, then if anything, I want them to turn on. I don't want to turn off. Uh, but right now they are both in kill position and let's see here right now. We're gonna do the screwdriver test Tap 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 tap. Okay, good. That's nothing nothing there Right now. I'm gonna turn on the bridge Nice good Still nothing there Okay, I'm gonna turn off the bridge Turn on the neck. Good. Nothing on the neck. Both on. Perf. All right, so that seems to have done it. And it's unique. At least till somebody else out there tries it. <laughs> Hope somebody else tries something different on here. I tried a couple of different uh, switches. I already thought about a couple anyway. Could not, for the life of me, find a, a good on, on, on switch. So if the rocker was in the middle position, both of them would be on down, neck, down this way, bridge. Quite literally only found one on the internet. And it was like 18 bucks and they'd have to ship it from China and it was gonna be like three weeks or something like that. So I said, okay, well, what other options are there and um, thought about push down buttons on push back on off and this seemed to be the cleanest uh, most um, I think natural way so if I'm playing live I can just pop pop I got those things going on um, and uh, aesthetically I think it matches pretty well with the guitar uh, there are some out there, so be careful if you're looking. There's some out there that look more like a uh, car, uh, like in-dash kind of knobs. Those ones have that sort of uh, orange peel texture to them. I did not want that, did not want rounded corners. This is gloss black, uh, sharp corners, and it has silver uh, zero and negative button uh, engraved in it. So anyways, I'm digging it. I think it's going to rock. 